So did you like the movie, Edgar? Uh, yeah, well, it's not the first time that I see it, but, uh, but I enjoyed watching it with you. <laughs> uh, yes, it's, it's very strange to see yourself in the documentary. It's, uh, I think the sensation is very much like uh, uh, hearing your voice on an answering machine. Like you always say, well, I'm this guy. Like I thought that I sound more manly, you know? <laughs> uh, so so it, it, is, uh, it is strange, but I think that, uh, that, you know, when somebody makes a documentary about anything, basically uh, it's like when I'm telling a story, you pick the facts that are relevant to the questions that you are asking. You are basically right. making the painting, and I, I really, I uh, felt from the first time that, uh, that I've met Rodger and Stefan that the story that they wanted to tell was a story that was uh, life-affirming, that it was a story about how we can be better and how we can create and how we shouldn't live on automatic pilot. And, and I think that the, 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 the takes that they have on my life is one that I can really connect to. Mm -hmm. Stefan, Rutger, uh, the question for you, and please be honest, because, uh, well, we have to start with, uh, with a question, what's the real story behind the story? Namely, what was the reason why uh, you made this film, and whether, uh, what was the idea uh, once you started? Because I have a feeling that it evolved while you were shooting it, but then we'll probably talk about it more. Uh, you're saying at the very beginning that you fell in love with Edgar's stories uh, as a teenager, and that was the driving force behind the uh, uh, film, well, it might be so, it might not. Be. I think that the second motivation, for sure, had to be that Edgar Carrot is pro probably the only writer alive on this planet that would be able and willing to do all the stunts that you made him do throughout <laughs> the movie. No one else would agree to that. But anyhow, uh, how did the, the idea came from? When? And uh, did he agree instantly? And who was he reluctant? How, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you should start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, actually, um, so Rutka and me, we know each other from high school. And so when I was 17 or 18 years old, I bought a book in a bookshop which had a nice cover. Uh, and I didn't know the writer. And uh, I, I read these stories and I really liked them. And uh, the day after... It, it was uh, yeah, it was only nice cover. Nice covers are very important in this. Uh, but uh, the day after, I told I saw Rutger on the uh, school square, and uh, I told one of the stories. I think it was Fetzo, uh, and uh, and Rutger became really enthusiastic after that uh, immediately. So he, he became infected with the Edgar Keret virus, and uh, and uh, and from that moment on. Uh, he became a journalist, I'm, I became a filmmaker, and 10 years later we wanted to do a short uh, fiction film of, uh, of Fetzo. <laughs> um, and around that time, Rutger did an interview with Edgar. Because yeah, I, I'm, I'm I, yeah, you say I'm a journalist, but yeah, I'm sort of a fake journalist, I always say, because I'm, I'm more of a writer uh, and I uh, use journalism as an excuse to get close to subjects or pers people that I want to meet. So, <laughs> uh, so I, uh, when I was in Israel, uh, I, I emailed Edgar if I could interview him. I didn't even have a publication to, uh, to, to, to publish it in, but uh, he said yes somehow. That's <laughs> also one of the things he does. He says yes to everything, um, <laughs> except documentary requests. We will talk about that later. But, but I, so I interviewed him and I hoped that we would become friends. Like I always hope when I interview people that I admire and it never happens. Uh, <laughs> but this time somehow it, it did happen because uh, half a year later you came to uh, Amsterdam with uh, Shira and he uh, contacted me and we uh, smoked a joint, um, <laughs> which is what you do in Amsterdam. And, uh, and we became friends. And, and, and through the interview, we, I, I, I had learned that Edgar's life is also an amazing story. So when we thought of the short story, the fiction story, uh, I said to Stefan, oh, maybe we can uh, use that as well. And then the idea grew and it became like the big mixture of documentary and fiction that it is now. And then we emailed Edgar if he wanted to uh, be in it. And we were very scared, of course, about his answer. But like when within an hour, he replied with, uh, we, we wrote him like this big email, like, oh, 
please, and this is what we're going to do, and blah, blah, blah. Probably a very vague plan. And he replied with, uh, this could be great fun. <laughs> <laughs> and was it? And was it? How long did it last? How long did the shooting yeah. last? I, I don't remember, but, uh, but four years. Yeah, I know, but shooting was two weeks. Yeah, yeah, but, but it was spread, kind of. It, it, it was spread. Uh, yeah, well, well, I think, you know, uh, m many of the things that, that I was asked uh, to do in, in the documentary were not things that were natural for me, you know, like wearing the uniform or or kind of reacting things that had happened to me in life, but uh, but it it was like I I saw uh, two passionate uh, young people who want to do their thing, and I just didn't want to get in the way, you know. I wanted to help them, and I think that that there is something there is something. Uh, about uh, Rodger and Stefan, I must say, especially about Rodger, because he's more problematic than Stefan, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that uh, all, the, all the time reminds me of myself. And all my life, like, I would go to people and I say to them, hey, you know, I have this great idea. How about uh, we send a satellite to outer space and then we send uh, dancers there, and when they dance, it will be like in zero gravity. And they jump, and people say, no. We don't want to help you with that. So I, I know this kind of feelings that you want to do something and people block you. And, uh, and, I, and I, f I, I really felt the, the passion of, 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 like, you know, I really felt the, pa the passion to tell their story, to talk about what interests them. And I didn't want to be the guy who says no, because all my life I hated all those people who said no to me. And so I said, okay, I'll do it. Right. But let's talk about uh, people blocking other people because uh, being one of the greatest short story writers is one thing, but you also uh, did a lot of work with TV and, uh, and with uh, cinema. And uh, let's talk about the very end of the movie. Did Edgar and Shira uh, really did give you advice you could not refuse throughout the shooting and uh, throughout the editing of the film? And were they like, no, come on, where's this camera standing? You better put it on... Yeah, they they were doing that all the time. Or uh, uh, Shira, Shira was very quiet. She was. Uh, no, but the but the, uh, the end scene is you know it's a reenactment right. <laughs> of something real. But uh, that that actually happened. She gave uh, it was her idea to to start the film with the with the airport scene. Yeah, yeah. And then it was Edgar's idea to do a, a commentary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but actually the, the the main problem was that that Edgar has has really a lot of ideas and it's it's it doesn't stop as they say in the movie, and uh, and uh, while shooting he's also telling these ideas. So you're just filming and you're trying to concentrate on the scene that you need to uh, film that day. And he's saying, no, no, <laughs> we can do this. Yeah, let's shoot this, uh, this uh, cat. He has a weird uh, face. <laughs> and then... Uh, and did then have a really weird face, by the way. <laughs> so so you, uh, you need to uh, pick the good ones and, uh, and uh, say, uh, well, maybe uh, this time we don't shoot the cat if, if the cat is a bad idea. So you have to uh, cherry pick them. <laughs> But there were no actual fights, uh, like and strong disagreements throughout the shooting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah. You can't uh, make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, as they say. So, uh, especially in Israel, where people, uh, yeah, they fight for breakfast uh, sometimes, uh, which is good because that's why they have, there are a lot of stories there. But people told us like uh, every story is a conflict and we have a lot of conflicts here. So uh, yeah, there was one moment when we interviewed uh, your mother uh, and you should never mess with mothers in general, uh, especially you know, with Edgar's mother because she's a great person, but uh, uh, it was very early in the morning and we had this dis disagreement about which questions we could ask her and which we couldn't, and I asked the wrong question, and you. No, no, it's, 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 it's not such a big deal. The, the, the thing was that that uh, uh, my my mother uh, was ne was kind of never interviewed for anything on, on television, and I said that uh, they can talk to her about anything, but that I don't want want uh, her to talk about the Holocaust. <laughs> and somehow, when they spoke in a very natural way, it came. Yeah. It came to kind of natural way to ask a question about the Holocaust and the truth is that I was uh, 
very stressed because I was afraid that it would be a bad experience for her. And uh, I said, but, but you know, I asked you not to talk to her about the Holocaust. But, but I must say that in general, I don't think that we had any artistic conflicts because in a very clear way, I, I always said, you know, it's your film, you know, and, uh, and I can give you an idea or I can think about something, but it's your film and you do, you, you're the one who called the shots. I think one idea that Edgar suggested was uh, uh, that the uh, security guy at the airport would say about Edgar uh, Stefan's uh, girlfriend that she had a weird haircut. Uh, this was a line that he wrote, <laughs> and uh, and he also you also suggested other stuff like uh, in in the animation of uh, a healthy start in the end when the guy is beaten up mm -hmm. and he smiles because he can imagine himself with the woman. The smile was bigger, right? But no, no, no I asked. The Oh, did you see the woman? Yeah. I thought, okay. I thought I thought he wanted to, a smaller smile. <laughs> well, it's, stu it's stuff like that, but it was more details and it was, yeah. I mean, he's, he, he is also an experienced, he's the best storyteller in the world, so you would have to be crazy not to uh, listen to his uh, suggestions. But uh, best storyteller, and this is uh, basically, your movie has three parts, the way, they were, the way I saw it. And... Uh, one is story of Edgar's life, or part of it. Uh, one is uh, the animations of the short stories. And the third, most, uh, not most important, but most, uh, uh, well, equally uh, uh, the exposed theme is the themes about telling the truth. And uh, that's something that really surprised me because uh, my first, I was even irritated a little bit when the first time I saw it. I mean, come on, you guys. Do you really have to tell me what's the difference between fiction and real life? I mean, would you I ask Cervantes whether Don Quixote really lived and Sancho Panza was a real person? And then once you watch the movie, and I watched it three times already, it turns out that you do have to talk about this because even New York City critics, literary critics, get it all confused. I mean, the moment when you hear from him in a cafe saying, uh, well, the truth, the truth story is better than the one you made up. It, it, for me, it was the most uh, uh, surprising uh, uh, part of the movie. And uh, I think the mo uh, one of the most that, that, that made the biggest impression on me. And did, was this something that you knew from the start that this is this was going to be one of the themes because well the title suggests it as well so uh, at, at which point you knew that this is going to be a big thing now we always knew that it would be a documentary about telling stories right. and and we knew that Edgar was great at telling about telling stories uh, and when we started we didn't really know exactly what the the conclusion of it would be, but uh, I think Edgar was the best person, the best writer uh, from all the writers <laughs> in the world <laughs> to talk about the subject because I feel that his life story is uh, 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 leads to becoming a writer, and uh, and and he has experienced uh, uh, really why uh, we as human beings need to tell stories to each other. I feel right. Sorry, uh, but uh, it's also a question for you because he he also really invited us to to uh, handle this subject because he wrote a story called Lie Land and right. he, he he I think he was also in a stage in his life where he was very uh, you know introspective about uh, how do stories uh, come into existence and stuff like that. You were talking more about this in interviews. You were publishing your memoir, Seven Good Years, so it was also a matter of timing, I guess. Well, I think that that all this idea of talking about, like, let's say, uh, subjective truth compared to objective truth, you know, it's a uh, so it's something. I mean, like, when you confuse it and you're the president of the U.S., it's a problem. <laughs> when you do it as a fiction writer, it's actually okay, you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and I think that for me, it all goes down to my mother because my mother, uh, basically, because she lost her parents in the war, she grew up in a orphanage in, a, a, in the beginning in Poland and then she was in an orphanage in France. And the idea was that, uh, that usually when we kid, 
we we live inside our head and and you know and we we imagine things and we don't always know the difference between what we imagined and what had really happened but uh, we have our parents to say to us this had happened this had not happened you know and m in my mother's life the the pe the people who were um, uh, uh, the, the figures of authority in her life were people who were not interested in their best uh, interests, you know, because the, the people who ran the orphanage were just about how they can give the kids less food and sell it in the black, black market or how can they make them complain less. So the idea was that when my mother would imagine things or when she would make up uh, rules about the world or when she would uh, decipher the world in her head, there was nobody who, uh, who was friendly that could hug her and say, no, no, it's not like that. So she, so she was never challenged. And I think in a sense that my mother, even now that she's over 80, she stayed a child in that sense. And when she said, I, uh, if it rains, you don't have to go to school, right. it made perfect sense for her. And when I grew up uh, and I had a child, when it rained, I said to my wife, you can't go to school because it rains now. <laughs> and my wife said, what's this nonsense? And I said, no, like, they don't teach him anything. I said, okay, but they don't teach him, but you know, it's, uh, he has to go to school. <laughs> and and uh, I think that I kind of grew up in a, in a, in a place that, that it was all about how it's okay to imagine things as long as your heart is in the right place, how it is uh, okay not to confirm and to be an anarchist as long as you don't do it for a bad reason. And, uh, and I think that, you know, that when I wrote the story of Lyle, and the whole idea about it was that I was trying to say that a, li a lie is like a tool, you know, it's like a hammer. So if you use a hammer to bash somebody's head, you know, then it's not good. But if you use it to put a nail in the wall and put a picture on it, it's actually okay. And, and with when I grew up in a house, in a home where my mother would tell things, that I couldn't tell if they were true or not. And you know what? She couldn't tell either because uh, I came with my mother to Poland when she was, she, when she was uh, uh, 80 years old and we went to, to you know, to Mosciono, the place where she, she, grew up, she was born. And we went to Warsaw and we went to all the places that she knew. And she said to me, on the way back, she said to me, it was such a relief be because all the things I remembered as a child there was nobody alive who could confirm or refute them. Like, so when I said the, oh, to you, there was a, an, a, a beautiful tree with a red flowers next to my window, I didn't even know if it was true or I made it up. And I didn't have anybody to ask about it. So, so going back to Poland, it was such a relief to see that so many things that I was unsure of really existed, you know, and, and I think that this was something that also kind of made this theme of the relationship of between the w words that you imagine, the words that you don't imagine, uh, that, that is real. W what, what is important? Like, are the facts important or, or is the essence of thing the, the, the thing that is really important? Right, right. So the legacy of your mother of not sending the kid to school when it rains sort of lives on because you pass it on to your son and then you pass it on through your short stories, and it's going to turn out that all of us are not going to send our kids to school when it rains soon. But so, uh, so I actually have a take on it. I I, <laughs> I take Le Lev to on trips overseas, and it's always like kind of the same because uh, in the Israeli educational system, you you cannot just take your kid for two weeks to New Zealand, you know. So it's always the same. I uh, I I fly to New Zealand, and then I text from the airport. Uh, uh, hi, I'm with my son in New Zealand. Uh, actually, he was supposed to stay with my mother, but she didn't feel well, and uh, I didn't know what to do, so we bought an extra ticket. I'm so sorry, we'll be back in a few weeks. I don't know exactly when. So, so you know, so he goes out in the rain because uh, my, my wife insists, but I find other ways not to send him to school because I also f think that they don't teach you things that important. <laughs> Uh, now the question for you guys, uh, you said that you were working on this movie for four years and uh, 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 we're going to see some materials, uh, the, the making of later on, so we're going uh, to learn what uh, what did happen behind, uh, behind the scenes, but uh, the, the first time I saw it, uh, 
I uh, mm, I thought to myself, well, there is uh, Edgar's biography uh, in here. There is uh, a lot about storytelling. There, there is a lot about uh, where it comes from. We meet a lot of characters that we know uh, from Edgar's stories, but there's no discussion of something that is, uh, to me, most prominent feature of Edgar, well, one of the most prominent features of Edgar's writing, which is humor. There's no discussion of humor in that film. And I thought to my, and, uh, 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 and 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 I thought to myself, well, well, why? And then my answer was, well, because the film itself is is funny, and that's maybe that maybe the uh, the reason. But was it on purpose? Was the entire film to be? Uh, w did you plan it in a way in which it sort of mimics uh, Edgar's writing? Uh, yes, yes. We didn't want to talk about humor. Talking about humor is also, is always a bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, definitely not funny. No, mostly it, maybe it could be funny. Maybe we should make a documentary about humor once. But uh, that's that. That will be another film. This this was primarily about telling stories, indeed. But but also we wanted to capture the the mind of this guy here, and uh, we thought the only way to uh, to uh, put it in a film is like to uh, to get the feeling that everything could happen in any moment. That. Um, the film could take a switch to animation and could take a switch back to fiction and right. uh, and switch back to a very normal uh, documentary setting. Uh, and we think that that fitted um, his unpredictable uh, mind the best. Right, right. Yeah, and also well, I think what we think is funny about Edgar's uh, work is, uh, uh, you know, just this sort of slacker guy's hanging out kind of feel of it. I think that's why we fell in love with it when we were teenagers. Uh, and, and But then you notice that it's laughter through tears. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that, yeah, and there's a tragic uh, yeah. under, undercurrent, definitely. But uh, guys like Uzi and Kobe, I mean, when we met them in person, we were like, ah, this is exactly <laughs> like Edgar's stories, you know. This, this is something that, that he told, told us about, and it turned out not to be ex exaggerated at all. I mean, these guys are, <laughs> are literally uh, just as if they walked from Edgar's uh, world. Uh, and, and we really wanted to capture that kind of humor, like uh, yeah, punching each other in the stomach as hard as you can and still not getting hurt. I mean, that's just, that's just something that you could have written uh, and that you grew up with, so yeah. But you said that uh, it's a weird experience to see yourself on uh, on a screen uh, that's sort of like answering machine on your uh, voice recorded. But I think that one thing that if I were you and that I would feel possibly slightly uncomfortable with after seeing that movie is that you, at least I have a feeling, but maybe you tricked me and maybe it's it's not entirely true, but I have a feeling that you did capture the mind of your uh, uh, hero, of, 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 of Edgar, but also you capture minds of other people who have their own impression or ideas about Edgar Keret. And it turns out that the idea of Edgar Keret, of Edgar Keret, is completely different from the ideas of Edgar Keret of all these people around, including close friends. Uh, uh, because I can understand that. Uh, no, I, it's totally true. It's like, you know, when, when I saw the movie and Jonathan, who's a really close friend of mine, says, some of the things he says about his son, they can't be true. Now, I never told him any made up story about my son. <laughs> and I say, now here's this guy, like, you know, he's my best friend, but he's also a very polite American, you know, and he sits with me and I tell him about something that happened to my son. He says, ah, and then he calls you a liar. Ah, okay. No, and then I go and he says, you know, to, to his wife, you know, Edgar again told me those stories. And I said, to him, oh my God, like, oh, I, I share with him intimate moments. <laughs> Me and my son, I didn't tell anybody. I just tell him, and he says, "Oh, it's Edgar again, going on with his." <laughs> so, so, and and the, and I must say that you know that. Uh, so that relationship is over. I understand. No, no, I don't no, no the, uh, 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 like people like Gu, for example. W I, the truth is, all the people that say that I'm not uh, telling the truth, I c I look at them and I psychologically analyze. You know why they said it? Because with Gu, it's a very, it's a very clear thing. Because, you know, I, I, go, I fly to Indonesia. I tell him a crazy story how they sh they didn't let me go through and how the literary festival they sent a guy who works in a zoo and his job is that whenever they send the 
a predator like a lion or a snake or a scorpion, his job is to get them through customs. So they sent him to get me through customs because <laughs> the Indonesian people wouldn't let me in because I had an Israeli passport and we don't have diplomatic relationship. And I look at, at, at the ghoul and we go like he's either saying, man, this guy has an exciting life while I sit here at home. So I either think he's a liar or I'll kill myself, you know? <laughs> so we said, it's, it's statistically impossible. It's not statistically impossible. You're just jealous, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> but also his wife calls him a liar, so... He's not. <laughs> uh, right on. Uh, should we see the uh, photos? Okay. Did you, yeah. We, uh, actually, I was expecting that uh, all of the photos that you've sent were going to be shown, but the organizers of the festival have just picked nine. So we're going to see... There were some inappropriate pictures there. Some of, the, some of the pictures, and please do tell us a, a, a story behind it. Well, this is, I guess, self-explanatory. We have seen the... You have very nice shoes, by the way. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the shoes are connected to a different story. Give me a break. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, I guess, nothing to tell uh, uh, about this picture as we no, really yeah, have seen. No, yeah, has a very nice face here. Uh. Yep. <laughs> and you were barefoot, and they were dragging you through that pavement. Oh. The fall of my father. There you go. And uh, what about the car, though? Yeah, we had that especially uh, made like this. This was, uh, this was the only car left, and it was... Uh, the, the guy who did the production design did a lot of research on what kind of uh, police cars there were at the time. And he, uh, he uh, also the, the signs that he uh, pasted on the car are from that time. So he, he did a lot of time on that. So you had it made specially for the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah, and in the background you see Toyota Priuses uh, going. Uh, right. that's, that's not in the 70s. Right. But the, the police uh, suits, they weren't uh, really well made. They were too big. <laughs> Here, this guy does, that doesn't fit really well. But so well. these aren't modern? These are from back in the day? Um, yeah, I guess do, those are old too. Just the sizes doesn't, don't really uh, fit. fit. I don't know. Yeah. Możemy prosić o następne zdjęcie? Hello, hello. Next, next one. <laughs> I or guess we're stuck. Or should I tell more? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to... Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is the same car. Yeah, it's the same car. They're just pushing it. Yeah, they're pushing it. So you hit the car specially made, but it didn't work. <laughs> right? It no, didn't work. It, it, it did work, but we needed to be uh, uh, silent because Edgar was telling the story here. Ah, and right. Uh, there you go. And we put the, the car sounds... Oh. We put the car sounds uh, after words underneath. Oh. Also, the car sounds are fake, but they're from the time as well, from old cars. Right. So it's based on a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all fake. <laughs> also, a uh, very important thing why we made this documentary is that uh, to show that you should never trust documentaries. Right. Well, and, and you actually see it from the beginning, because uh, it doesn't happen on an everyday basis that uh, main characters in documentary do acting. Yeah, yeah right. no, he's a very good actor. Yeah. Uh, and this yeah, is yeah. this is on the beach. Uh, we uh, uh, in actually in the story there was a there was a, a monkey. Uh, but ah, so you switched it to pirate. Yeah, we but because uh, there, <laughs> there uh, there's a law. Uh, this is it working? Yeah, it's working sometimes. There's a law against filming uh, monkeys in Israel, so, <laughs> so we switched to the parrot. W we're very sensitive to monkeys. Yeah, this is the uh, Negev Desert. I think it's one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Uh, yeah. And that's why you decided to shoot there? Or was it Edgar's request? Uh, ah, can we go back? No. Yeah, he teaches in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. And also, we uh, there was a connection with his, uh, with his life story because after the suicide of your friend, you went to the to the Sinai Desert, so we wanted to to have a right. a deserty uh, 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 background. And actually, that story didn't end up in the film, but the shots were so beautiful that they 
fitted the movie <laughs> still. Uh, yeah, this is a cardboard fatso. Fatso. We made it for the for uh, the pre premiere in Amsterdam. And that's uh, Shira, by the way, and Lev. That's the son of Shira and Edgar. And you guys. Uh, and uh, let's spend a second here talking about animations. Uh, uh, how you decided? Uh, did you pick the stories? Did Edgar pick the stories? Uh, or, uh, who made the uh, animation? How closely did you work with the yeah. artist and so forth? We picked the stories. Uh, we wanted to uh, uh, choose stories that fit your uh, life story. So right. we, we uh, picked the ones that fit it in the movie thematically. And we uh, worked together with Nina Gantz and she's a great animator from the Netherlands and she works in the England now. Uh, and we really liked her style. She has uh, the same humor, I think, as, uh, as Edgar. So that, that was the most important thing. And, uh, and what I really like is that if you, if you watch at her, uh, at how she draws a character, you immediately have a connection with him or her. Or I, I immediately feel uh, I, I love him or I hate him. Right, right. And you as a comic book lover and a graphic novel reader, what did you think about animations in the movie? Uh, I, I like the design very much. Uh, when it came, came to like shooting or the ways that you know that the story unfolded, unfolded, I felt that because there was a voiceover, that uh, many times I felt that the animation did the same thing that the voiceover had said. So, so like b being like always kind of a, this kind of a un, a unhappy customer, uh -huh. I, w I could have said a lot of things, but I, will, but I, I said like, you know, it's not my film, it's their film and, and uh, my aesthetics is, can be different. But the only thing that I really asked was that in the end of the story, a healthy, healthy start when the guy gets punched. Right. He that, hugs uh, that I wanted to, to see the woman. And, and there was something about it that because I really like the style of the animation, I think that my yearning to see the woman was because I wanted to see how the animator would illustrate her. And I really liked the way that, that she illustrated her, not as somebody who's really like a very beautiful, uh, or 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 something, but but that she just illustrated it as a very intimate moment. That what she illustrated was not her as something that he yearned. F that what he yearned for was not somebody, a woman who's beautiful, but he yearned for this moment of feeling close to somebody. And I found it uh, very very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So this was I was suspecting watching the movie that you guys <laughs> are lying. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, not even good liars. I mean, it's very, it's not even that high. Uh, yeah, uh, this was just we weren't planning on on letting him jump from uh, <laughs> from this very low uh, wall, uh, but he was going to tell the angel story on a roof because that's where the angel story ends uh, with the guy uh, jumping from a roof. Right. Uh, and it was also because we wanted uh, uh, to sp spread the suicide story in subtle ways throughout the movie, you know, that, that you would not forget it. Like, uh, there would be references to it uh, throughout. So, uh, when Edgar tells the story about the guy jumping from, a, from, a, from, from the building, you, you might already think, ah, oh, that's suicidal, but I really like the added detail of Edgar himself also jumping. Uh, so, yeah. And, and uh, the sound guys did a great job with doing the sort yeah. of Batman-like shoosh of his uh, shirt. Right, Rutger, you... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 My, that's my girlfriend, actually, the one... Uh, <laughs> uh, Second to last. Yeah. Um, she hated this. She hated this moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is the moment where Edgar crawls from the pipe. That's probably a moment that Edgar hated, but... Uh <laughs> 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 yeah, and... Um, but it, uh, it turned out really nicely. You should talk about this. You're the, you're the, you're the real director. Uh, yeah, well, uh, 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 a lot of people uh, looked very strange. Also, when you film in, uh, in, uh <laughs> in Tel Aviv, everybody knows, uh, uh, knows Edgar in Israel. Uh, so f every uh, cab driver even knows him. I don't know, in the Netherlands, you can't, there's no rider that every cab driver knows. 
<laughs> so it, at this point, it was it was really weird because he was crawling out of pipe and and people were saying, "Is that is it?" <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say that it's the it's not that they they know me like a, as a public figure. They just know me because it's a small place, so everybody knows me. So you know, so so <laughs> it's kind of I feel that a, a, a when people approach me in the street in in Israel and talk to me, it's not like when you go I don't know to some place and and they talk to you as if you you're somebody famous that they saw on TV. I think that there is something about the stories and, and I write and the characters of Israelis that when they talk to me, like after five seconds, like I'm sure I went to school with them, you know? It's like y usually when they come, like they, they, they don't say like, hey, excuse me, Mr. Carrot. It's like kind of, they go and go, <laughs> how are you doing, man? You know? And, they, and they very quickly I, I say, yeah, yeah, you know, th they're my friends. We, we, I know, knew them for a very long time. and. And I think that also when we shut, uh, it, it actually sometimes makes things very easy because you ask somebody f to, to help you or to do a favor and they immediately react as if we have some kind of a shared past. And it's something that I really like about, uh, about uh, being an artist in Israel, that it's not as if l they say, oh, you're an artist, you're important. They say, oh, we shared a moment together, you know, uh, you were with me the day when my girlfriend dumped me, you know, and and there's something that I like about this feeling. But uh, now it comes to a worse moment, the moment of conclusion, because the movie uh, uh, we've all seen it. Uh, probably I uh, I urge everyone to see it uh, over and over again because I have a feeling that with each thing, I get more out of it. But Bottom line is, uh, we watched a movie, we watched part of your life, we watched uh, 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 your ideas about storytelling. I think that the, the, the two very convincing bits are about structure and about the truth of uh, uh, emotions. That, uh, and, uh, and apart with a uh, mm, unfortunate coffee drinker, I think that's the essence in my uh, uh, mind, not only of writing, uh, not only of Edgar Keller's writing, but of writing as, as, as such. Having seen it many times already, is there anything that you'd like uh, people to, uh, to know about you that's not there? Or do you think that these guys did a good job? Uh, I, I, I think they did a, a great job, but, but again, no. I think that, that basically, when it doesn't matter when you tell, you write a story or, or when you uh, make a documentary, I think that when you go, you see a, you see a pile of facts, right. and 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 the filmmakers they take the facts that are interest them the most, and they structure them in a way that makes sense for them. So so I think that you know the, this film it's not a it's not about me. It's about Stefan and about Rodger and about what w about the meeting point with me. You know so so. So I, m I may think like, you know, if I would want to tell the story of my life, I would talk about this or I to would talk about that. Right. But, uh, but it's a little bit like a relationship, you know. It's like, it's like w when I met a, a, a m my, my wife, I would see a lot of uh, football games. And uh, what happened, w w would happen was that whenever I would watch football games, uh, it would really, really bore her, but she would be really nice about it. And at some part of our relationship, I stopped watching football game and started doing stuff that we would do together, you know? And I think that uh, this is makes sense because in a relationship, it's, it's not that you impose who you are. It's that it's like two people who can find the, a meeting point between them and in this kind of ecosystem, right. new things grow. And I think that the same goes uh, f uh, for, for movies, you know? So. So f for me, if there was uh, any kind of a uh, feeling, it wasn't they got it wrong, but it was, ah, this is the thing that interests them? Wow, that's interesting, you know, because I would have never thought that they would find this interesting. Right, let's, ho let's just hope that people get it because, you know, some of the characters in the movie had a hard time differentiating between fiction and non-fiction, and most of the people are used to the fact that documentaries are true, but luckily guys decided to just 
tell us over and over again that what they're doing is not exactly a documentary. Yeah. Do, do you have any regrets, uh, having seen this probably hundreds of times by now? Uh, uh, and how many materials uh, 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 have uh, have been put aside? How much material has been put, yeah. put aside? And yeah. <laughs> so is there going to be a second director's cut like six hours long? No, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I put way too much time in the editing uh, but and, and there's still a lot that was very interesting uh, but but didn't but didn't fit in the end so I'm just I just go with the, this is the best version just for my own uh, health <laughs> Rutger please uh, say yes yeah well uh, yeah I'm a very neurotic person so every time I see it I have a different regret but uh uh, uh, no, but in the end, I think it's I th it's uh, something that is uh, as good as it could be. And uh, we put out so many versions and talked about it so much. Uh, and in the end, it was like, even at the last minute when we had to send it in, it was like the last second we, st we were still sort of texting back and forth. And, and then Stefan literally texted to me like, no, this is it. It's a good film. <laughs> and then, and then, then it was sort of okay. So, yeah. We're okay. But I can say, you know, I haven't seen that, that so, many, so many times, but when you see it, I think every screening, there is something about the energy of the o from the audience or where you are. And when I, when I saw it this time, and you know, and there is this bit that they start shooting me in New York, then I thought to myself it was a shame that they didn't shoot me in Poland. That was my feeling. Like I said, we should have gone to the narrow house. <laughs> we would have a great time there. Yeah, no, this is true. Yeah, I actually went here uh, w with uh, with Edgar for research, and and I saw the uh, when he was signing, there was a huge line, and the, uh, I was totally blown away that he that people uh, know him so well, and even more when I found out that that so your uh, both your parents are Polish, and that uh, that your mother always says that you're not an Israeli writer but a Polish writer in exile. <laughs> 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 that's uh, and to see that there's so many people coming this evening in Poland that's that's really amazing uh, which uh, proves your mother's point <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one last question to you guys uh, you are uh, uh, high school buddies you st you're still friends but this is your first professional cooperation I understand and has it uh, uh, changed much for you? Are you guys going to work on, to, uh, on uh, projects uh, uh, together in, uh, in the future? or Maybe later, so but now we have a, <laughs> we have a pause. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I think in a way uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're be better, better friends than we used to be, but uh, we had to go through, uh, through some really rough times to get there. But it's good. It's good. Just like the film. <laughs> Rough times. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Jeśli Państwo mają jakieś książki i, i, i bardzo potrzebują autografu, to e, e, Edgar myślę, że przy stoliku tu się z, e, zgodzi. Tak więc zapraszamy. Dziękujemy bardzo Państwu za liczne przybycie.